Good morning, Living Waters. Wow, well, thanks for having coffee with me this morning. Welcome, welcome. Or whenever you're having coffee. Maybe it's a midday coffee break. Maybe it's lunch break. Whatever. For me, it's midday here, actually. But anyway. <clears throat> so, we, uh, we have this Transfiguration Sunday this past, um, yesterday. And, uh, Transfiguration, right? It's this uh, transformation from a, a lesser to a greater state. Um, Jesus is transfigured, right? It's not just a, a surface level um, image, but rather a transformation of Christ, revealing his divine nature. That's why it's always the end of the season of Epiphany. Great. Excuse me, sir, and we're kind of catching up here. Anyway, uh, so I thought this week, what if we looked at, in our time of coffee together, uh, passages where God uh, transfigures things that really matter. And hopefully as we work in this Lent to transfigure our exhaustion into hope, uh, we can use these examples to, to draw upon. All right. I thought this was fitting for our first one since uh, we jump right into to Ash Wednesday this week, so why not use a text that is often heard on Ash Wednesday? Uh, this is Psalm 51. I'm going to focus on verses 10 through 14, but you know it. And if you haven't, this is a good one. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. That's the part that right was in our liturgy for so long in the ELCA. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. The song slaps. Anyway, but I'm going to keep going. Two more verses. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O oh God. O oh God of my salvation, my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. What transfiguration is happening here? What... Um, this is David writing the psalm after he makes many, many, many mistakes um, with, with uh, let's call it what it is, the sexual assault and rape of Bathsheba. Uh, he breaks all ten commandments in one story. That is impressive in all the wrong ways. <laughs> he messed up big. He knows he's in the doghouse, he's heard from the prophets, that God is not happy. And so... He writes the psalm as part of his lament, as part of his seeking repentance. Um, he's asking God to transfigure his heart, to help him change his ways, right? Uh, and not only that, I think this, these verses, we hear 10 through 12 so much, right? They're asking God to do the transfiguration. But then he also offers in verse 13 and 14 the results of transfiguration, right? Transfigure my heart, O oh God. Take away, you know, take away my sin, um, Transfigure my sin into new life, right? Um, I will teach transgressors your ways. I will, you know, deliver me and, and my tongue will sing your deliverance. When David is transfigured, uh, now that there isn't consequence, this is important, there's still consequence for his actions in this passage. Um, it's not like, oh, well, there's still consequences. However, um, he is transfigured and is able to uh, have a new life, a second chance, be able to proclaim God's goodness. Now, between you and I, David messes up a couple more times, but the, God continues the process of transfiguration. So even when we make mistakes, hopefully we're not breaking all Ten Commandments at once, um, God gives us chances to be transfigured as well. And God has that power to transform us from our life where we're making these mistakes, this life of, of sin, and take it to a higher level of new life of goodness, of proclaiming salvation, of sharing uh, with others. All right. How about that for our first Monday? Woo! I'll see you tomorrow.